Nowadays, if you need to run a root operation, most people are going to use sudo, but most Linux systems also ship su. But su isn't just a single thing. There are tons of different implementations. We have long moved past the Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson version. Now on Linux, we primarily use the version that used to be part of the GNU core utils, which in 2012 shifted over to util Linux. Now util Linux is developed by the Linux kernel organization, which you might better recognize as kernel.org, the place that actually hosts the Linux kernel. Now, during those days when the Linux version of SU was developed by GNU, the documentation had an interesting anecdote by Richard Stallman. Why GNU SU does not support the wheel group? At this time, it actually didn't. Like, the wheel group was not a thing that SU even cared about. Like, it's not just doesn't support it, it did not acknowledge that it even exists. Any user, whether they're a guest user, a regular user account, the admin of the system, if they wanted to run the su command, they absolutely could. And if they knew the password for the account they were trying to su into, they could just do it. Let's see why it was like that. Sometimes a few users try to hold total power over all the rest. For example, in 1984, literally 1984, a few users at the MIT AI lab decided to seize power by changing the operator password on the Twenix system and keeping it secret from everyone else. I was able to thwart this coup and give power back to the users by patching the kernel, but I wouldn't know how to do that in Unix. However, occasionally the rulers do tell someone. Under the usual SU mechanism, once someone learns the root password who sympathizes with the ordinary users, he or she can tell the rest. The wheel group feature would make this impossible and thus cement the power of the rulers. I am on the side of the masses, not that of the rulers. If you are used to supporting the bosses and sysadmins in whatever they do, you might find this idea strange at first. Now, in the context of modern computing today, that seems absolutely wild. Like, you want the system admins to be the only people that have admin power. However, this is coming from the context of 1980s computing, which was a very different game. One thing that is kind of unclear to me, and I haven't been able to find any good information on this, is how did he patch the kernel? without having admin permission. That seems like something, and on a Linux system it would be, that you would need to have admin access to go and do. The only logical assumption is the kernel doesn't have like file system permissions connected to it, but there is very little information about how these Twinix systems actually functioned. Now, I'll get to the 80s stuff in just a moment, but before that, I want to give my own personal anecdote about using a Unix network, Unix system, whatever you want to call it. So, back in high school, all of us used managed MacBooks. They had a centralized root account. Now, the students were not supposed to have access to the root account because they don't need it. They are supposed to be using effectively locked down user accounts, pretty much a guest account for all intents and purposes. Now, it turns out that teachers were given elevated privileges, and teachers did a really bad job at hiding their password. They would frequently enter their password with a student standing over their shoulder. So, one of those students paid attention to what keys were being pressed, and then shared that password around to all of the students in the school. And do you know what we did? What any good student is obviously going to do. We disabled the web filter, played Halo, played COD 4, and had a lot of fun. Now, the world of literally 1984 wasn't a world of interconnected web devices where every single device you have needs to have an internet connection. Sure, there was email, and there was connections that existed, but we were still a couple of years away from commercially available internet. At this point, your biggest concern was physical access to the hardware, like someone going onto the campus and interacting with your local network. 
And around the same time, a concept started to form. A wheel war. This came out of Stanford University. This is an idea which makes absolutely no sense if you look at modern computing and, you know, modern business practices around how computers should be handled. But a wheel war is when students and other people with administrative access basically tried to lock each other out of being able to use the system. They would modify wheel access, they would modify passwords with the intention of basically taking control of that system and, you know, having more access to the computing resources, which at the time was still fairly limited. This usually wasn't without unintentional consequences harming other people who were not even remotely involved. I know, that sounds really stupid, but it's a thing that actually happened. And the early days of having computer access on a university like this, just nobody really knew what to really do with them and what people should be allowed to do. And Stillman wrote that story in the context of knowing that things like that were happening. So he didn't want that to be able to happen in the context of GNU SU. Now the only problem is not supporting the wheel group in SU didn't actually change anything with the way that this all could go down. So SU and sudo work in a slightly different way. If you want to use the sudo command and run a root command, you need to enter your own password. If you want to switch user into the root user, you need to enter the root password. So let's say for example that at the time, SU supported the wheel group and your user account was not in the wheel group. So you couldn't run SU from your user account. But if you know the password to the root account, you don't need to be able to run SU from your account because you could log out and then log in directly as the root user. So you can circumvent the whole not being in the wheel group thing because you actually know the password. The only thing that not supporting the wheel group did was just be inconvenient because that wasn't the only version of SU. There was also a version over on the BSD side and as it states over there and as it's pretty much always stated, PAM is used to set the policy SU will use. In particular, by default, only users in the wheel group can switch to UID 0. So, on the BSD side, they have just always used the wheel group. And crazier, if you don't want the group requirement, it can be changed. Now, the other issue with the whole Stallman password thing is it doesn't take into consideration the malicious user issue. So when he said, I'm on the side of the masses, not that of the rulers, what if one of the masses decides, hey, I have the root password now, why don't I just change the root password? <laughs> like, what are you going to do? They just own the system now. It's their system. Neither SU, a wheel group, or any other technological solution is going to deal with the problem of trusting users who shouldn't be trusted. One of the first things I learned going through university is... Assume that every single other user besides yourself is malicious. Every user is trying to break your system and is trying to do something bad. Give them as minimal access as they need to have to do everything they need to do on the system. The way you actually deal with this problem is having policies outside of the system so that if someone tries to take over the system, you can then deal with them outside of that. Don't just let someone steal your entire computing system because they stole the root password. That's a crime. Call the police. I can't even imagine living in a world where people thought the idea of a wheel war was a totally normal thing. Like, oh, this is just what happens if you have a computing system. Like, the fact that there was a time where people had that little understanding of how to manage a system like this, that something like that could actually happen is absolutely wild to me. And this is the reason why I love doing these historical videos. Just finding out that dumb things like this actually happened. 
Now, a long time ago, this problem was addressed. Actually, it was addressed while SU was still a part of the GNU project. All the way back in 2003, PAM support for Core Utils 5.0. If we scroll down just a bit, it also removes the Richard Stallman section from the documentation. I have no idea what address at hidden fascism is supposed to be. I uh, might need to dig into what that is. I didn't notice that until just now. And distros like Arch Linux may not enable it by default, but if you go into your slash Etsy slash Pam dot D, and in here, there'll be a file called SU. If you go on and comment these lines right here, you can go and change it to actually make use of the will group. If you include this line right here, it will automatically trust users in the will group. And if you include this line right here, it will require a user to be in the will group to make use of SU. As it stands, I've just left it as default. Man, the history of Unix is a wild, wild place. <laughs> there are so many just bizarre stories that if you don't understand the context around what was happening back then, just seem odd. Just don't make any sense, because it's not how a computer would at all be managed today. But I love it nonetheless. <laughs> so, if you like the video, go like the video. If you ever knew that SU didn't support the will group at one point, um, let me know down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. So, you really like the video? <laughs> Got the outro. Uh, if you want to become one of these amazing people over here, a Patreon subscribe to the linked in the description down below. That is going to be it for me. And honestly, fire is a better invention than wheel.